Hello and welcome to the short vort on Parshas Vayakel and Parshas Golem. Today, once again, there's another example of Hashkacha Pratis. Hashem shows His divine intervention, His personal involvement with each and every one of us. Our job is to look around, to notice it. For me, it was the fact that I had planned on using a Torah Sabigdur uh, lecture, and I misplaced the copy, and I looked online for the version that I had, and I found a different version that I decided to use, one that became more topical because we're talking about convoys, the Jewish convoy, how Jews do the convoy right. Now, in Parshish Vayakel, the Parsha begins, Paraklamet Hey, Pasuk Hey, Moshe has gathered all the people, and he commands them, Kachu medchem truma lahashem, gather from yourselves a, a portion uh, for the tabernacle of Hashem, for the Mishkan. This is part of the process for, for building the Mishkan, Jews would also contribute for sustaining the public services of the Mishkan. And that's what the Machsas HaShekel is about. That's what Parsh Shkolem is about. Time of the year where it's uh, Adar and in the United States, uh, by Purim, we give three half dollars because that's the Machsas HaShekel, the half of the local currency. And that's a remez, kind of a hint to what tradi traditionally was the Machsas HaShekel. But Rabbi Avigdor Miller shares what a, the, the process looked like back in the day when there was a base in Mikdash. At that time, uh, you'd have thousands of Jews come from, from Bavel, from the, from the exile, from the Gullus, and they would be uh, taking with them the half a shekel. Every Jew, was, once Adar came, uh, they set up commissions, they set up officers, Gaboyim, everything to make sure the Jews would give their half contribution, half shekel, contribution obligation. And then once they had a lot of them, because think of it, if you have millions of, of Jews, then you're going to have you know, half that amount in the form of a masa sashekel from, from the men. And that's going to be pretty heavy. I don't know if it weighs a ton of shkolem, but uh, it's definitely a lot. and most likely it does weigh more than that, a ton. And they would gather and they'd have this convoy going uh, on the way and they would stop off at all the different local communities on the way. And when other people would see this magnificent procession, then they would remember, oh yeah, I've got to give uh, my Machsas HaShekel too, and they would join. Sometimes they joined the procession that was going to Eretz Yisrael, and because they, they wanted to learn Torah, so they, this was a way to go with a, a crowd. And even people who had passed away and were buried in Bavel and wanted to be reburied in Eretz Yisrael, uh, they would go with this convoy. Now this convoy also made um, treaties, because uh, they had armed guards to protect the Jews on the way, and also they would deal with the governors or the kings uh, and the other rulers of the places they would go on the way. And wherever there's Jewish com community, they can go in and they'd even get you know, a tax abatement that they negotiate that we can, uh, we can use this convoy to go in and receive this column from the Jews. And they would typically agree unless they're in Canada. But then again, Canada was not around at that time of year, so at uh, that time of, of history. So that's probably not an issue. And then they would take this to Eretz Yisrael, and they would have everyone would have a share in the karbanos of these, the offerings in the base Hamikdash. Now that we don't have a base Hamikdash, so we have we do our offering in our own way. But we should realize that this is how, by community contributions, is how the Jewish people become united. May we be zocha to have the building of the third base of Mikdash and the Gula Shlema so that we'll be able to do the Masa Sashekel with the right and Jewish convoy. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week, wonderful Shabbos, and a wonderful Adar.